Our next presentation will be from Dr. Horst Sievert on the VLAP, the first wireless microcomputer implant for the management of heart failure patients. Perfect. Thank you very much. So these are my disclosures. I know that this list should be longer, and I'm working on that. <laughs> but just to let you know, I, I have no... <laughs> We don't want you to take up your entire time I, I have, with your disclosures. It's important here to mention that I have no interest in the company working on this project here. So, is anybody here from the company? We should meet. Are there any questions? We should, we should meet later on. So, hey. What's that? Okay, so how patient care works today and tomorrow. Today, we interact directly with our patients for a limited time in our office when something is wrong, based on clinical signs and symptoms. But I believe that tomorrow, sensors will monitor our patients on a daily basis, pressures and flow, O2 and CO2, nerve activity and motion, as well as feelings and thoughts and I also had politics on this list here, but eliminated this for the purpose of this presentation here. All data will be available remotely and online. And I believe that after online shops, online taxi companies, online phone companies, virtual hospitals will be the next step. VLAP was developed to prevent the number one cause for hospital readmissions and that is heart failure decompensation. Heart failure decompensation always starts with increased left atrial pressure and only many days or sometimes weeks later, this is followed by fluid retention, clinical signs and symptoms, and finally hospital admission. Therefore, it would be very beneficial and very nice if we could measure the LA pressure in our outpatients and that's something we can do now. This is VLAP, the, first, uh, the world's first in-heart microcomputer. It's battery-free, wireless, digital, and is measuring directly the LA pressure. The next slide is a six-second video just to demonstrate how fast this device can be implanted, so please pay attention. It's a transeptal puncture, transeptal device, like a PFO closure device, and then a belt is turned around the patient, and then we can measure the pressure. How does it work? We have an external home electronics unit, patient self-management at a tap of a button anywhere, anytime. The measurements are captured and analyzed using artificial intelligence and cloud-based systems, and then heart failure medications are adjusted remotely. What does it measure? High resolution LA pressure waveform in a digital format. And that is important because that allows us to analyze the data. This is the external device home unit. A portable belt connects wireless with the implant, processes LA pressures readings, and transmits the captured data from the patient to a cloud-based management system. Patient management system will utilize artificial intelligence because we are not intelligent enough and machine learning technologies will identify worsening early enough to enable effective preventive treatment and will pre provide actionable recommendations to both the patient and the doctor. By stabilizing patients through personalized daily adjustment of medication dosing, deterioration may be avoidable. These are some images from the first patient on fluoro and echo, and you can see it's looking like a small PFO closure device. This shows you the mean LA pressure trend over time. You can see the daily measurements in the upper curve and then uh, tracing at a given time in the lower curve. This shows you uh, an example where uh, the medication was adjusted according to the pressure measurements and after increased uh, torosamide dosage, the pressure went down and stayed low. Specific finding in this patient, there was a large daily LA pressure variability, and this could be an indication for higher risk of heart failure hospitalization. 
This is in this patient probably more vascular related than volume related. And this patient may benefit from enhanced vasodilator therapy with a long acting nitrate. This is an example for comorbidities detection. The second half of the tracing looks like exaggerated respiratory variation, suspicious for obstructive sleep apnea, and this later on could be performed, uh, confirmed. This is a case of suspected mitral regurgitation, large V waves correlating with atrial volume and or compliance, and this can be seen with worsening mitral regurgitation or atrial fibrillation. This is the current status of the study. 30 patients will be enrolled, 10 centers, main inclusion criteria, heart failure class three, ejection fraction more than 15%, and heart failure hospitalization or elevated BNP. Endpoints are safety, feasibility, accuracy. Status is uh, 11 patients had been enrolled with the longest follow-up of 13 months. This shows you the really excellent correlation between the mean device measured LA pressure and the mean PC pressure measured with right heart catheterization. So in conclusion, using the VLAP system, we can measure the left atrial pressure without battery and wireless, very accurately, on a daily basis, remotely. And I believe that VLAP will change the way how we manage heart failure patients. Virtual hospitals are the next step in patient care. Thank you very much for your attention. Of course, really, really nice job, as always. Um, so those 11 patients that have been enrolled, can you try to give us a little snapshot as to what change in clinical care pathway those 11 patients have had over the 13 months, I believe, you suggested that you have follow-up on? Well, that's a little bit too early. None of these patients needed readmission due to heart failure, but for that, we need more patients, and we need a controlled study, of course. This is just a feasibility study to show that we can do these measurements, and then we are able to adjust the therapy according to the measurements we obtain. Yeah, I, I just, again, I, with all of these digitally-based and, and algorithmic-based therapies, we need to do something with the data that we're obtaining. And if it is making our clinical pathways actually more onerous at the end of the day, it's not going to help care. We are really at a very early stage because what we can do with this device, we can measure the pressure twice a day, three times a day, 10 times a day. And we get lots of measurements and we have to learn how this translates into the <coughs> clinical symptoms and how we can adjust. We, we have to develop algorithms to adjust the therapy according to these measurements. Right. Dr. Schwartz? Uh, very nice, uh, Horace, very nice technology. Well, you can do individual samples, as you've shown us. You can also get a, a waveform. How much memory is on board here? In other words, how far into the past can we look? If a patient had an event last night, for example, no, is that recorded? Just, it's, currently, it's just one measurement. So, so a single measurement? Only, only when the patient is wearing the belt, applying the belt, then the measurement has been taken. But I mean, it's a good question. Uh, uh, the technology will make progress, and later on, it may be possible to measure this continuously, 24 hours. Exactly. So, wait, Dr. Rothman? Uh, Horst, um, an interesting area. There's a lot of technology being developed in this area. Talk, talk about your device and baseline stabilities of pressure measurements. These devices often drift, um, and they give relative pressure measurements, but not absolute. So talk, talk about that. You showed us a set of data on measurements on an acute model. What about the chronic data? No, these are chronic data about uh, th six weeks or three months after the implantation. We know from the animals so far as we can say that there is no shift with this device. But if it is, then we could readjust. Okay. Um, Horst, crystal clear presentation. Really love the, uh, the way you did it. Um, you know, this is a competitive space. Why would I do a direct left atrial pressure? Is it really better than doing a pulmonary artery pressure, which I can do kind of blindfolded by floating a swan? Is that really better? And I also have some compromise, right? Because now I, it's a more difficult to do a transeptal procedure because I have a big device sitting there. Well, the device is very small. There's enough space for any other procedure, so that's for, not for you. Issue. Yeah, <laughs> no, for everybody. <laughs> no, it is. It is very small. It's like the smallest PFO closure device, so there's no issue. Uh, and and the second question was, why is it better than than PA pressure measurements? 
Uh, well, LA pressure is really uh, representing, as you know, the LV antiastolic filling pressure. So it has to be, per, per definition, better than any PA pressure measurements. Or it's a direct measurement. And whenever you can do a direct measurement, it's better than a secondary mechanism, which depends from, from many other factors. Yeah. Brilliant presentation. Yet there are several companies now working on non-invasive measurements. Mm -hmm. Where do you see your device? Uh, non-invasive in things are always a big challenge for us interventionalists. I know. I know. We will see. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank, Thank you, Horst. Great job.